blockchain. <laughs> <laughs> because we are all in it for the technology, right? <laughs> now, blockchain is a technology that have unprecedented powers, such as unquestionable immutability, or the extreme high levels of transparency, or the ability to remove intermediaries and remove trust from a system and rely on digital facts in cryptography. Now, the fact that I'm working in blockchain is thanks thank to hundreds of people who helped me and many moments that led me here to speak at this stage. But the first moment when I decided was related to the early days of the refugee crisis. When I was living in Norway and I felt powerless. And essentially what happened is that I was full of good ideas, full of good business ideas that I knew that can change people. And I can deliver real impact for people who need it. And so I decided that I'm, I'm going to use this amazing new technology and work on it to deliver what I planned. And so this is what led me to identity. But if I would run a survey in this room and ask everyone what identity is, I would get very different answers from everyone, such as you, or you, or even you back there. Because identity is contextual. It depends on where you are and what you are doing. But let me give you a couple of examples, such as your passport. Did you even know that actually your government owns your passport and you only have the right to use it? Or your funny Reddit username. Can you prove it to me that Reddit can't take it away from you? Or Facebook. Is Facebook your identity? Would be sad. But are we okay that there are portals that knows more about us than our friends or even us? Or what about banks? They verified us and they rely on regulations that they have to prove who they are, but we trust banks, right? So I basically categorized for you identity into a couple of simple examples. And the first would be knowledge-based identity. Think of it as the network of people who you actually know. It is basically based on innate trust, for example, towards your parents when you burn born, or trust that you develop towards others, such as the security guy in your local grocery store. Because in the past, there was no need for any other form of identity, because people knew each other, they trusted each other, and they knew the relationship between all members of a tribe, and they questioned or even killed those who weren't part of it. Now, they also didn't have smartphones or weren't able to cross the Atlantic in just six hours. But think of your knowledge-based identity as your social graph that you're constantly developing by interactions with other people. However, there are situations when innate trust is just not enough. So that leads us to our second category, the proof-based identities, because sometimes we have to move away from low level trust and move the trust away from a personal level to a higher recognized, known or even trusted entity that can prove who you are. For example, think of your loyalty cards. They are accepted everywhere in the world. Any shop you visit, they will prove that you are a good customer and they will let you get that extra free coffee at the end of the month. How great it is. But since you are in a university today, Maybe a better example would be your student ID. Have you thought of how many rights your student ID actually give you? It enables you to access museums or transportation with a discount. And it gives you rights that only belongs to those people who are enrolled in higher educational institutions. And there is one very important of these that you probably haven't thought of, and it's the ability to access EduRome. Edurome is a global internet service which is available on almost all co university campuses all across the globe and available for every university student for free. Now, why it's important? Because the card that you receive from the university, it 
only a representation of your rights, a proof. But in many instances, you actually have to prove your rights on the internet. And that leads us to our third and probably most important category, which is zero identity. It's zero identity because the internet was created without a layer of identity. Now think of it for a second. Have you thought how many sites you visited, how many different digital solutions you used, and how many kitten videos you watched online? You had to use a different set of credentials to prove and just do that. Or just, just the number of how many times you claimed your name, your phone number, and your address during the last year. You see the problem with the fact that the internet has not, doesn't have an identity layer is that we created an extremely fragmented ecosystem with so-called data silos where there is no way to link together verified data. And where it's led is a situation that we can't surf the internet with knowing and proving what we have done. And that leads us to a solution, a technical solution that can solve it. It's not blockchain, it's based on blockchain. A solution which might just give, a solution, might just give the answer for all of this. A solution that can lead you to own data. The solution that is just amazing because zero knowledge proof is a way to show verifiable data without actually revealing the data itself. Now, this might be a little complicated, so let me break it down and make it simple. Let's, let's take a cat. Not any cat, but a cat will everyone will recognize. Now, I'm going to close my eyes, <coughs> and I will ask someone to put a box on this cat. And let's give this box a special identity. A special identity that we can create questions and can use zero knowledge proofs to answer. Now I'm going to request the box, is there a cat inside? Because I didn't see, I, it might be outside. And the box would say, yes. Now, based on that, I'm going to ask this box, hey, the cat is alive or dead. But since it's a paradox, the box can't answer. So. Now, the good thing with technology that it can do a lot more. Think of your boarding card. This boarding card you use to actually land in your country. And what it gives you, it gives you a right to sit on this plane under this name this is mentioned on it. But what if you would be able to use a special identity, a solution, to not only prove the right that you can sit on the play, plane, but the right that you can land in the destination country based on a single truth. Think about it, how simpler boarding would become. Or another example, because we are millennials, you just registered this brand new Instagram name and you decided that you want to be Insta famous, successful, and post funny pictures from your life and get money for it. Now, what if there would be a decentralized identity that would enable you to prove Instagram your phone number, that you own your, that you live at your address, but not only that, but you would be able to avail verifications from the three bank where you are registered and the two other cell phone carrier that you have your name, you are from that country where you are from, and they all verified you. And Instagram would be able to give you that little tick which would make you much more trusted on the platform and create a lot of new followers. And these were all examples from the developing world, but what with those who are disenfranchised situation? What with those 1.1 billion people across the world who can't even prove their age or their mother's name? Now, imagine if you would be a refugee in Greece and you would walk up to the camp manager and tell him that you are Jasmine. And the camp manager would believe you and give you a verification. And with that, the camp would open its doors and offer you services such as shelter, food, education, and even healthcare. And not only this camp, 
but the following camp would be able to rely on this original verification and offer the same services while you can actually move your health record so they don't need to spend more money on it all the way across every camp you visit. Now think of how simpler life would become in the camp for these people, as well as people working in these camps would have so much simpler solutions because they don't need to reestablish trust every single time. They can just rely on a single sort of truth. This technology is called self-sovereign identity. A solution that will enable us to link our digital life to our material one. A solution where we would be able to prove who we are in the digital space by using real world verification linked to our digital persona, by removing the complicated services and owning data, we would be able to regather our rights that belongs to us. And by that, we would have the ability to not only make privacy ours, but also make services life easier and make them able to do what they are best at, the service. And don't think about security or privacy, because it's all solved by technology. Think of a word where you would own your own data and you would be able to consent what happens with it. Now, that's what I mean when I say how to use technology. Thank you very much.